So hello everyone, welcome to this uh, demo uh, of Spring 36. And I will present the very first demo uh, that is about uh, reverse solver that has been implemented. So let me share my screen. And I prepared a small presentation. So why reverse solver was, was needed? So let's say we have a package that is TensorFlow in version 2.00, and uh, we want to analyze it. This package can come from any uh, Python index. So uh, one of our very first analyses is uh, dependency analysis that is done by Solver. And Solver can tell us what are the direct dependencies of TensorFlow together with version range specifications. For example, if we have TensorFlow 2.0, uh, it can have a version range specification for NumPy, and it can state that it requires 1.18 or above. And our solver also resolves what exactly versions can be installed. So in this case, there are three versions. This is done for each and every direct dependency of TensorFlow. So you can imagine the same thing for ABS LPI and other uh, direct dependencies of TensorFlow. Uh, we do this for each and every package. And in that case, we can construct the wall dependency graph. Uh, but what happens if there is a new release of NumPy, let's say 1.18.3 right now? We analyze uh, its direct dependencies and sync information into our knowledge graph. Uh, but uh, you can see that uh, TensorFlow stated that it can run with NumPy above 118, and this uh, patch release uh, satisfies the version range requirement. So what we want to do, we want to basically link uh, back to the already analyzed TensorFlow that 1.18.3 is valid uh, dependency and it's a patch release so we can have uh, some bug fixes or, or for example security improvements. We do it also for other packages that uh, can depend on this NumPy version. So let me go to terminal, terminal and what I prepared uh, here is a log of uh, this reverse solver run that does this resolution in the reverse uh, and I let it run. So this reverse solver talks to the cluster where it asks for uh, solvers that are uh, registered inside cluster and it's because we analyze these dependencies specifically for uh, runtime env environments. So I, I used our top test core environment where we have three solvers. One is RHEL 8 running with Python 3.6. Another one is Fedora 31 running Python 3.8. And the other one is Fedora 31 Python 3.7. Uh, and I said, uh, I see a new release of Selenon in version 1.0.0. And the reverse solver should tell me what packages can depend on uh, this Selenon release, uh, given the already analyzed packages that we have in our knowledge base. Uh, as you can see, it takes some time to run reverse solver completely offline, so it does not download any packages from, from the internet. Uh, it uses solely our knowledge base of, of uh, dependencies that we already have. And uh, it's not that uh, resource hungry as Solver, as it basically creates multiple queries into our knowledge base and then uses internal packaging logic to, to check for version range requirements and to check uh, what packages uh, should be uh, updated with, with dependencies. Uh, just one note, I did some experimentation and I didn't remove one dependency that is uh, Flask 102. It was just for, for debug purposes. But if you take a look at the output of, of the analyzer, you already know this structure where we put all the information that are relevant for, for a reverse solver run or any component that we run in the cluster. 
And here you can see in the result field a list of uh, packages that need to be updated. So uh, we know that Todd Berker relies on Selenon. And uh, here we have information that Todd Berker in version 002 uh, in running in environment uh, rel 8 Python 3.6 should uh, link to uh, the Selenon that uh, has been released. Uh, here you can see also other uh, things like marker evaluation results, that is uh, the uh, evaluated marker, uh, where uh, we evaluate this marker for each and every environment, and then some extras and other things that are needed for, for, uh, uh, for properly creating entries in our uh, database, and then subsequently in uh, in advisor during uh, resolution to correctly respect Python uh, ecosystem and version range specification. That's probably it. Do you have any questions? If not, so uh, you know, yes. once we found the packages, uh, we're gonna run like solver for them automatically, uh, or yes. just link them. Uh, we uh, each time we see a new package that is released on PyPI, we run solver for it, so we know what uh, direct dependencies that new release has, and in parallel we can run also this reverse solver, and uh, the reverse solver will basically state uh, which packages should link to, which in order to have uh, the dependency graph up to date. Okay, thank you. Any other question? If not, I will proceed to the next demo. And that is uh, one nifty tool uh, that has been implemented. So you know MicroPipen, that is the tool that we use for installing dependencies. And if you take a look at output of MicroPipen, uh, I downloaded one uh, build log uh, from the cluster where we installed uh, where we installed dependencies. So you can see that each time there is built a Python application, uh, I will scroll uh, to the beginning. Uh, we put some meta information into into the log. As you can see, it can be quite uh, long for for real world applications. But here is a build of one of our components. And here you can see the wall log uh, together with information about Todd, what configuration was, was used, what CPU was discovered to, to enable CPU targeting uh, optimizations when re resolving stacks, then some additional report. And then we scroll down uh, in each and every uh, build log. There is also present pip file log to to note down what dependencies were actually installed together with hashes and also sources from where these packages were installed from. If we scroll down even more, then we can see uh, the output of pip uh, that is installing each and every uh, package from, from resolved stack. So here you can see AI uh, all HTTP in this version uh, from this URL being installed, and then there is other package being installed, and uh, that's basically the installation log. And at the end, you can see that uh, the resulting image was pushed, and uh, the build was successful. If I now run this newly created tool, uh, No, 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 right. Put build block and I ask to parse that block. What it does, it finds the structure that is uh, present in, in the log and creates a YAML file uh, out of, uh, creates a JSON file out of, out of this log stating each dependencies uh, that were installed. So basically the pip file log uh, is parsed that is printed to, to the output. 
But there are also other uh, metadata like uh, what package is in what versions, from where they were installed, if the installation was successful, if the given package is real, and stuff like that. So it's a machine readable form of, of uh, the log that I showed earlier. This was a successful um, build, so you can see also information about where this build, um, where this build was pushed, and if the if other parts of of that were run, so if provenance check was run, if advisor was run, what was the builder image, uh, what version of that components uh, were used to build the resulting container image. So uh, this is a successful log. And I have also another log that is not successful. And here uh, we uh, found an error where uh, ashes were not correctly aligned or matched when installing uh, an SQL alchemy in particular version. So we uh, really observed this error uh, in our cluster. And when I uh, run our tool to parse the log uh, besides stating the wall, wall log file. It states also information about errors. So, for example, here uh, it states that uh, the installation was not successful together with the wall log uh, that was produced during the installation for this particular. Uh, package. So this is basically the package that built that broke the build. The main advantage of this uh, approach is that we have really one uh, build log that is consistent, let's say, and um, we can easily identify uh, automatically using uh, other algorithms uh, what packages uh, caused errors, and uh, we can run this automatically. Uh, in our uh, or after our build watcher submits blocks of uh, builds into dot. So uh, that would be it. Are there any questions? So if not, uh, that's my demo. And the next demo will be shown in the upcoming recording. So thank you.